At age 25, the thing that dramatically changed my life was, first, the discovery of a unique product that I could believe in. My mother taught nutrition and good health, so I was the beneficiary of that. It came from my grandmother, and my grandfather passed it on to my mother, who taught it to me. My father never had a major illness, he lived to be 93. My mother extended her life, according to the doctor, at least 20 years. She should have died at least 20 years earlier than she did, simply because she stretched out those years by studying good nutrition. I was an only child, and mama studied and mixed up all that stuff back then. She'd say, hey, me and papa and her, she said, drink this stuff. If it don't kill us, I think it'll help. And we'd be gagging down this stuff, and mama taught all of that. But the payoff was incredible. I passed it on to my two daughters, they've never been ill. They passed it on to their children, my grandchildren, they haven't been ill. I mean, the study of good nutrition, paying attention, and being involved in the industry you're in is one of the best. So, that's so important, your personal philosophy, what you believe in. That's going to carry you into the next century. Let me now give you some of the early philosophies that changed my life forever. Some of these philosophies have lived with me all of these years. I've passed them on, and people have come back around, saying, Mr. Owen, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, I sat in your class in your seminar, and those early things that you taught, I practiced it, and I'm doing it. A man not long ago showed me notes he took 23 years ago, and then he had me sign those notes. He said, I've used these notes to develop my life, my personal life, and my business life. And when he took those notes, he said, I was 18 years old. It's incredible. I'm so thankful for all these years, but now I want to pass it along to you, some of the philosophies that changed my life forever. Okay, if you're ready, say, I'm ready. Here's the first one. Profits are better than wages. Once I understood that, I got rich. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. I went to college for a year and a half, never heard it. I'm 25 and broke. I'm not destitute, I'm broke. Too much month at the end of the money is broke. And I finally heard this philosophy. Profits are better than wages. Now, here's the phrase that goes with it. Wages make you a living, which is fine. Profits make you a fortune, which is super fine. And you can live both fine and super fine. You've now got the mechanism and the ways and means to do that. Profits are better than wages. Guess what? I taught this in Moscow when I was teaching capitalism. You know, the communists had it all wrong. They taught that capitalism was a big company that oppresses its workers. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous. They had mentally lost it when they came up with this ridiculous philosophy. Communism taught that capital belongs to the state, not the people, and we taught all these years what? Capital belongs in the hands of the people, not the state. That's why, of course, kids should pay taxes because they can be capitalists, and all capitalists should pay taxes. And it doesn't take much to start an enterprise that makes a profit. I teach kids how to have two bicycles, one to ride and one to rent. You know how long does it take? How long does it take to make a profit? I mean, a little ingenuity, and you're on your way. Profits are better than wages. Capitalism better than communism. Communism said people are too dumb and stupid to know what to do with capital. So you must take capital away from all the dumb, stupid people and give it to the always all-knowing state and let the state run everything. I mean, that was communism, and they devastated every country they touched. I've been to East Germany. It's taking a trillion dollars just to clean up East Germany. They've already spent 500 billion. They've got 500 billion more to go. I mean, every country they touched, and I've been in all of them. It devastated them all with their devastating philosophy. We teach. Capital belongs in the hands of the people. That's where the ingenuity is to bring goods and services to the marketplace. And I'm going to show you later the miracle of capitalism, grassroots in America, which you're involved in. But once I understood this, it was incredible. Profits are better than wages. Now, when I first was recruited, I'm a distributor for this little product called Abundavita, and here's what my mentor, Mr. Schaff, he said, Mr. Owen, you can start this miracle working business part-time. You don't have to go full-time. You can start part-time. And he said, if you'll devote to start with, let's say, 10, 12, 15 hours a week, you'll start making a profit. Here's what you can now say. I'm working full-time on my job and part-time on my fortune, 
because profits lead to fortune. I got so excited about that philosophy. I'm working full-time on my job, but now I'm working part-time on my fortune. I found a way not only to make a living, now, you won't believe this, I found a way to make a fortune. Can you imagine what that's like? Then to get up in the morning to go to work on your fortune, not to go to work to pay the rent, which is okay, but a chance to go to work to make a fortune? And I said, right now, I'm working part-time on my fortune and full-time on my job, but it won't be long until I'll be working full-time on my fortune. Can you imagine what life is going to be like? Now, here was my first goal when I started, and that was part-time. I wanted to equal on my profits part-time what I was earning on my full-time job. This is called the magic of part-time. It is so thrilling for people to start working the business part-time because now you can work on profits. And it doesn't take very long if you'll really concentrate on those 10, 12, 15 hours a week. It won't be long until you can be earning as much part-time working on your fortune as you are full-time working on your job. I did that in less than six months. Now, I've got an incredible invitation. I found a way, part-time, to work on my fortune, and I'm making as much money at that as I am on my full-time job. Would you like to hear my story? It was incredible. Now, here was my second goal. To make twice as much money part-time working on my fortune as I was working full-time on my job. And I reached that in less than a year making twice as much money part-time working on my fortune as I was full-time working on my job. Now, I've got an incredible invitation that won't quit. I found a way through a unique opportunity to work part-time on my fortune, and I'm now earning twice as much money as I am working full-time on my job. Would you like to hear my story? Do you imagine anybody would say, No, I don't care to hear your story? No, everybody I said that to said, Wow, yes, what are you doing? I said, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you, when I started making twice as much money part-time as full-time, here's my dilemma. I didn't want to go full-time. And why not go full-time? And the reason was because I didn't want to give up my electrifying story, right? It was so powerful, nobody could resist the invitation to at least take a look. I didn't want to give it up. And I hung on for, I don't know how long, until it was almost insane. Then, finally, reluctantly, I gave up my full-time job. What does it take to really change a person's lifestyle? Not very much. An extra thousand a month, I'm telling you, will drastically change most people's lifestyle. And that's why part-time is so valuable, because it very quickly changes a person's lifestyle. Everybody wants to hear your story, so the key is part-time. The magic and attraction of part-time give you a classic invitation for somebody to listen to what you're doing that's changing your life. And it's not just necessarily the money that changes your life. It's what you do with the money, the change of lifestyle. So, part-time helps to change lifestyle, which gives you a classic invitation to look at what you're doing. That's how I started in network marketing at age 20. Here's the next philosophy that helped change my life. It's not what happens that determines your life future. It's what you do about what happens. All of us are like little sailboats, and it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your destination. It's the set of the sail. So jot this phrase down. It's one of the best to understand. Kids need to understand it. The same wind blows on us all. The same wind blows on us all. The wind of disaster. The wind of opportunity. The wind of change. The wind when it's upside down. The wind when it's favorable and unfavorable. The same wind blows on everybody. The economic wind. The social wind. The political wind. The same wind blows on everybody. The difference in where you arrive in one year, three years, five years. The difference in arrival is not the blowing of the wind, but the set of the sail. And that's what learning is all about. To set a better sail this year than last year, to set a better sail. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. The second six years, I wound up rich. You say, well, the Democrats must have finally gotten power. No, 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 it was not a political change. Here's what changed. The second six years of my economic life, it was my philosophy that changed, the set of the sail, better thinking, correcting the errors of the past, and picking up new disciplines for the future. That's all I had to do at the end of the first six, correct the errors of the past and then pick up some new disciplines for the future, and my total life changed. The second six years were totally different than the first six of my working life. And guess who can do that? Anybody. Now you can keep on the same path for the next couple of years as you have the past too, but if you wish to, if you wish to and maybe everything's okay for you and you don't need to. But if you need to make some changes, I'm telling you, 
You can start doing it today so that the next two years will be drastically different than the last two. And anybody who wishes to do that can. And you can do it between ages 40 and 43. You can do it between ages 13 and 15. You can do it between ages 60 and 62. Any two years. Any five years that you wish to drastically change from the previous five. You can do it if you wish to. Now, this is not written. This is not a law. Here's what it's called. Opportunity. But if you don't know you can change, if you don't know you can drastically change your income, change your future, change your health, change your marriage, change everything, if you don't know that, some people then go year after year after year after year not making much change simply because they didn't get to the class, they never read the book, they never went to the seminar, they never made the discovery, they didn't seek for the knowledge of how could I make my life better. And if you just rock along, I'm telling you, it's okay. Anybody can live any way they choose. But I'm here to tell all of you that if you wish to, it's possible to make the next three years totally different than the last three. And all you have to do is just a few things. So, have you got that one? Now, it's not the blowing of the wind that determines your income. It's not the blowing of the wind that determines your fortune. It's the set of the sail. And that's why we gathered here today. Maybe I've got some ideas that'll help you with a couple of little things about setting the sail of your thinking that might drastically give you multiplied more benefit the next three years than you've gotten in the last three. So, it's not what happens. What happens happens to everybody. Chevron years ago brought me in to talk to management. They said, Mr. Owen, you travel around the world and you're fairly knowledgeable. What do you think the next 10 years are going to be like? I said, gentlemen, I can tell you, I do know. The next 10 years are going to be about like the last 10. The next season after fall is, I promise you, that's not going to change. After day comes night, I promise you, that's not going to change. Here's how the last 6,000 years read. If you want to make a note of Jim Ron's vision of history, the last 6,000 years. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. And if we're around another 6,000 years, it's going to read like that. Looks like for the next 6,000 years, opportunity mixed with difficulty. Now, sometimes there seems to be more opportunity than difficulty, and then sometimes there seems to be more difficulty than opportunity. But the mix isn't going to change. After expansion comes recession, but after recession comes expansion. Not to think so is naive. And once you've got just a little of this stuff settled, then you know exactly what to do. You know exactly what to anticipate, so you can be ready. Now, here's the next one. For things to change, you have to change. I was hoping the government would change, change, and taxes would change, and economics would change, and my boss would change and be more generous. I wished for everything to change, and my teacher said, No, Mr. Owen, for things to change for you, you have to change. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Once I understood this, this altered the course of my life. Don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. And here's the big one. Don't wish for fewer problems. Wish for more skills. You don't need fewer problems. You simply need more skills. Don't wish for fewer challenges. Wish for more wisdom. Accept the challenge because you can't grow without a challenge. You can't get rich without a challenge. You can't fly without gravity. You have to understand the challenge. But that's the key. To now develop wisdom to overcome the challenge. Don't wish for fewer challenges but more wisdom. And then here's one more philosophy to help change my life forever. You can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Humans can do the most remarkable things no matter what happens. Philosophies that change my life. Here's one of the big philosophies I learned in network marketing. It's called the law of averages. If you do something often enough, a ratio will appear. The key phrase. If you do something often enough, a ratio will appear. It's amazing. It's uncanny. In baseball, we call it batting average. If you talk to 10 people, one says yes. Now, the ratio has begun, 1 out of 10. Talk to 10, get 1. Here's something interesting about the law of averages. Once it starts, it tends to continue. This is colossal information. Once a ratio starts, it tends to continue. If you talk to 10 and get 1, sure enough, chances are excellent. If you talk to 10 more, you'll get another one. Talk to 10 more, you'll get another one. Now you can compete. If you can only get 1 out of 10, you can compete even with somebody that can get 9 out of 10. If you've been here a long time, you can get 9 out of 10. I just joined. I can only get 1 out of 10. If we have a 30-day contest, I will beat you. Say, how could you beat me? Here's why. During that 30 days, 
You talk to 10 and get 9. I talk to 100 and get 10. I beat you. Isn't that clever? This is clever stuff. And I do it for two reasons. I sincerely wish to win, but I do it for another very sincere reason. I wish for you to lose. And that's noble on my part. Here's why it's noble. You learn more by losing than you do by winning. So, I wish to give you that experience. Now, here's how I do it. Once I understand the law of averages, when I'm new, I make up in numbers what I like in skill. I make up in numbers what I like in skill. Now, who can do that? Anybody that's ambitious, anybody with a little ingenuity, anybody. It doesn't matter. Here's one more. The law of averages can be increased. You get one out of ten, talk to ten, get another one. Talk to ten, get another one. The fourth time you talk to ten, you get two. Why would the fourth time you talk to ten, you get two instead of one? You're getting better, you're getting better, and who can get better? Anybody, talk to ten, get two. Talk to ten, get two. Finally, talk to ten, get three. I finally got up to about three. Now, it takes more than a genius to go past, like, three or four, but three will do. If you bat 300 in baseball, they pay you four million dollars a year, which means you're out seven times out of ten. Seven times out of ten, out, make four million dollars a year. You don't have to bat a thousand to make big money. One out of ten is fine, two out of ten is terrific, three out of ten is fabulous. Some particular incredible genius might get four out of ten. But 3 out of 10 is sufficient to make you rich beyond your wildest imagination. This is how I went after my first friends, neighbors, and relatives when I first started recruiting. I said, look, I've got a new business, and I'm getting about 3 out of 10 to join, and I don't mind. You just come to the meeting and be one of the seven. And so, it's not important to me that you like it. It's not important to me that you join. It's certainly not important to me that you buy. It's just important to me that you listen. One of the reasons I want you to hear the story is that because a year from now, if I'm doing well, I don't want you to say, how come you never picked up the phone a year ago? I never got a letter, never got a call. You call me a friend, you're making all this money. You never picked up the phone. So, I don't want that to happen. So, for two reasons, I want you to see what I'm doing so that a year from now, if I'm doing well, I can say, you know, I gave you the opportunity. But also, just as a favor, come and be one of the seven. It doesn't matter to me if you buy or join, but I need 10 to get 3. And if you're one of the 3, wonderful. If you're not, wonderful. It doesn't matter. It might matter to you, but it doesn't matter to me. Now, it matters to me because we're friends, but it doesn't matter in terms of my averages. Now, you can achieve all of this by mastering the next skill, recruiting. I learned it, and it made me fortunes. So now, I possess 3 skills. Milking cows, making sales, and recruiting. Here's the next skill I learned that yielded big money, organizing. Once you have a few people, get them to work together. See, that's magic. Getting people to collaborate is magic. Yes, it's challenging, like hurting several members of your family to work together, but it's magical when it happens. But everything magical is challenging. You just have to remember, everything magical is challenging. Once you figure out the challenge and go for it, then the magic occurs. Let me tell you how magical it is when people work together. Let me quote the Bible again. If two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing is impossible. Just try that on for size mentally. If two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing's impossible. Everybody's looking for a challenge. Here's what I teach, especially to the kids. The best challenge in the world is, let's go do it, not, you go do it. Let's go do it. If two or three of us decide on a common purpose to do it, nothing's impossible. Working together, organizing, now, when everybody's independent, it's a little more challenging. Like having kids. They each have their own opinions, ambitions, and desires. It's challenging, but that's what makes life rich, the variety. And it's the same in your business. It's challenging to get people to work together. It's like herding cats. You know, sheep are easy, but you've got to try herding cats. But if you can possibly get it done, the power is immense when you get people to work together. One of the powers of working together is shared testimonials. If I have somebody new, and you're there, and I'm there, I give them my testimonial, you give yours. Maybe what tips the scales in getting me a new person is not my testimonial but my partner's testimonial. Shared testimonials are so powerful. That's why working together is powerful. Now, working by yourself is okay. 
All this stuff is okay. Everybody needs to know, though, where are the advantages? And these are some of the advantages. I learned that organizing paid big money. Here's the next thing I learned. Communication. How to conduct a meeting. How to identify logic and reason. How to present a solution. Communication wasn't easy for me at first. I stood up to give my first presentation, and my mind sat back down. I'm sure you've been through that. I opened my mouth, nothing came out for a while. But here's what I did. I did it again. That's the secret to how I got here, 35, 40 years later. I did it once, it was uncomfortable. That first presentation was so lousy, if I hadn't been doing it, I'd have gone home. But here's the secret to how I got here. I did it again, and then I did it again, and then I did it again, and again. I remember when I first decided to be a little more animated, right, and walk out away from the podium. So I got out there, and then I thought, how do you get back? Whoa, I'm stranded out here. Remember those times doing something for the first time? But you learn quickly in your business. In your business, the guy stands up to give his first testimonial, and he's so nervous he forgets his own name. And 30 days later, he wants to give a three-hour testimonial, you hardly get him off the stage. Learn communication. Learn how to affect other people with words. That's the greatest art in the world. To learn how to affect other people with words. Key phrase. Don't be lazy in language. If you learn to use the gift of your language wisely, it can make you a fortune and build an incredible life. Here are three other things I learned. One is to train people. Train them on how the business works. And then, I've used another word. Teach. Train and teach. And I only say this. Training people on how the business works, teaching is how life works. Because here's what all of us need for the 21st century. Business skills and life skills. The life skills are leadership skills, learning how to set goals. Now, here's the ultimate skill to learn that can transform your life and the life of whoever will. The ability to inspire. Inspire means to help people look up a little higher than where they are and wish they could get there, and inspire them that it's possible. Here's how we inspire, by our own testimonial. If I can do it, you can do it. Here's how else we inspire, by others' testimonials. If they can do it, you can do it. Getting people to see themselves better than they are, richer than they are, more capable next year than they are this year. Helping both your kids and your people. Here's what you must learn to do. Number one, help people see themselves as they are. If people have made mistakes, they've got to know it. You can't go on making mistakes and hope to achieve. Mistakes have to be corrected. And you've got to do it with your children. Help them see themselves as they are. If they've messed up, here's what you've got to say. You messed up. But here's what's important as a parent. Don't leave them in the mess. Some parents tell their kids they've messed up and then they leave them in the mess. They don't paint a better picture. Here's what you could become with just a couple more changes. Rather than this, here's what you could be. So we must help our children see themselves as they are. But here's the greatest gift. To help our children see themselves better than they are. To transport them not only past to see their mistakes, but transport them to the future to see their opportunity. To see the person they can become. My mentor had that greatest gift to help me see myself better than I was. At first, it was difficult to see. Then I started to believe. And that's how I got here today. He said, one of these days, Mr. Owen, You'll walk into a room full of people, and you will hear some of them say, that's him. And I'm sure all of you have already gotten that experience, even though you've been here a short time. Some people will try to get on your back. That's where we got that expression, get off. The guy discovered somebody on his back and said, what, I can't carry you. Get, now, if you're like some I see here, you know, if you put four, and you weigh 300 pounds, you might carry one. And if you were really big enough, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or something, you might carry two. But you can't carry three. When babies are born, they're not designed just to be carried. Babies were not born to be carried all their life. Someday, you've got to try your legs. Someday, you've got to try your wings. Someday, you've got to try. Even if you fall down, you've got to try. Because you can't just crawl around all your life. You can't be carried all your life. So as quickly as possible, you can help a thousand, but you can't carry three. Next, don't expect the pear tree to bear apples. I used to try to change everything. You can hang apples on a pear tree. I'm telling you, it won't help. You can put up a sign, this is an apple tree, but sure enough, come this season, pears. Here's what I learned. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. Capital in your business isn't what matters. 
It's not the money that buys you a future, it's your skills that buy you a future. Money and no skills, and I'm telling you, you're still poor. Money and no ambition? Where are you? Money and no courage? You're broke. A little bit of money and a whole lot of courage, that's all we need. I'm looking for people when I'm recruiting. Back in those days, the money didn't matter to me. What mattered to me was somebody's willingness, somebody's ingenuity, somebody's willingness to try. If they had a dollar to invest, that was plenty for me. A dollar and some ambition, and I can show you how to get rich. And it'll be one of the classic stories of the company. I go to recruit somebody, they'd say, I don't have any money. See, I've been looking for you for six months. Let me show you how to do it without any money. Because here's the rules of capitalism. You can either buy and sell, or if you're in certain circumstances, you can sell and buy. If you've got ambition, now if you haven't got ambition, we can't cure that, and money won't cure a lack of ambition. But if you've got a dollar and some ambition, I'll show you how to get rich. And even if you don't have a dollar, I'll show you how to get rich, because you can sell and buy. Somebody says, as soon as the product arrives, I'll sell it. Then you don't understand the magic of fortune. If you say, I have to wait till it gets here to sell it, and you probably don't understand the value of your own story. Once I understood that, I knew I was going to be wealthy. That's why right in the beginning, I started giving big tips. I knew I was going to be rich. Wow, isn't this fun?